Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, including Black Friday here. Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. we got a lot to get into here on the program. No show on Thanksgiving yesterday. Actually, if you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, we did do a show. Brian and Vinny's show. Talking AEW and NXT. But, no Wrestling Observer Live. Today, we return... And we got all of that stuff to talk about. What were your thoughts on AEW and NXT from Wednesday night? We don't have ratings. We're not going to have ratings until uh, maybe Tuesday's show, actually. They're probably going to come out Monday afternoon. I suppose it's possible they'll come out today, but I'm very skeptical. So we don't have any of that to talk about, but we do have the shows themselves. We had two shows, both building up bigger shows. AEW is building up the Winter is Coming TV special, which is this coming Wednesday night. We have a full lineup for that show, which includes the biggest match in the history of Dynamite. Some would argue one of the biggest matches in the history of the promotion. John Moxley defends the AEW title against Kenny Omega for free on TV next Wednesday. Now, normally, when AEW has a big show like this on television, NXT does whatever they can to hotshot a head-to-head show. They didn't do that. Because, in fact, the following Sunday, next Sunday, is NXT TakeOver War Games. And so everything is being built towards that War Games show. And believe it or not, we went off the air on Wednesday night with literally one match announced for this coming week's NXT. It is a women's match to determine the man advantage. I would say the women's advantage, but... The way they do things where two women have an Iron Man match, a women's Iron Man match, I don't know. I'll just presume it's the man advantage for the women's match. Anyway, that's on NXT next week. We'll talk about both the shows, whatever's on your mind. We'll take your text messages and so much more. Kicking it off after the break, Wrestling Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live, uh, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Should note that today is Black Friday, and if you've got a couple of bucks lying around, what better time to subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com than right now? The answer is there is no better time, because today it is our Black Friday sale. A full month of unlimited access to WrestlingObserver.com for $3.99. Normally $11.99 a month. Today... Until midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific. So you got nine hours. You can sign up today, $3.99. What do I mean, unlimited access? Well, I mean you get everything. What does that mean? Well, we started the website in 2005. And since that time, we've been doing radio shows, audio shows, podcasts, whatever you want to call them. And every single one of them has gone up into the archives. So this is no exaggeration. If you sign up right now for $3.99, you can immediately start listening to 12,000 shows. 12,000 plus shows. Every Wrestling Observer Radio from day one, every Brian and Vinny show from day one, we've covered everything. There's three to four Observer Radio shows every week dating back to 2008. And actually, Dave was on prior to 2008, so there's even more. Brian and Vinny show was from day one, 2005. We've covered every pay-per-view. Like, I've covered every Raw SmackDown. If you want to go back through the Monday Night Wars from 95 through the death of WCW, week by week, we covered every single one of those shows. 12,000 shows that you can download. You'll never get through it. It's like the Smithsonian. You could never get through every show on this website. People have tried. People have said, I've listened to every Brian and Vinny show. Well, that's nice. What about all the other shows? You can't do it, but you can try. Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave puts out every week. All these news tips that you read on the internet, 99% of them came from The Observer. You may as well read The Observer every Thursday. Make life a lot easier for yourself. We got archives of The Observer dating back to 1990. Almost complete, not quite. There's still a back issue that goes up every week as well. So there's a couple of years we don't have. But in general, I mean, from 1990 through today, every single Observer is archived on the site. So all of that, everything, $3.99 right now. Head up to WrestlingObserver.com, sign up, jump in with both feet. 
only, only from now until 9 o'clock Pacific, midnight Eastern. Do not miss out on this. You will regret it. Something's going to happen. Some crazy is going to happen tomorrow. And there's going to be like all of this audio about it. And you're going to think, if only I had just signed up on Friday. Now I got to pay the full price. It's worth it paying the full price, I might add. But why not pay $3.99? So head up there right now, WrestlingObserver.com. You will not regret it. I got another show coming up this afternoon, Lance Storm. He's got a lot of stuff to talk about. The Lance Storm show is every Friday. The Filthy Tom show comes up every Monday. All these Brian and Vinny and Craig shows. We talk retro shows. Saturday night's main event is coming up this Sunday. We did AEW at NXT last night. Every Wrestling Observer Live goes up there immediately. So if you ever miss a show, it's all there in the archives. I hear that Mike has a show I heard. Denise... Jim Valley is going to be back at some point. All of his shows are up there. There's so much great stuff. All you got to do is go up to WrestlingObserver.com and hit that archive button. You can see everything that you will get if you sign up. So anyway, enough of that. What more can I tell you? If you don't sign up, you're just crazy. But now we got to talk about news. So this coming Wednesday is the Winter is Coming show. And... This is what we've got so far. We have got John Moxley versus Kenny Omega for the AEW title. Probably the biggest match in the history of Dynamite. Maybe the biggest match in the history of AEW. It's free this coming Wednesday on Dynamite. Title's on the line. And this is not... Hate to say it. And actually... To give them credit, the last time WWE did this on Raw, which was like two weeks ago, they actually gave you a new champion. I don't know if you're going to get a new champion, but what you're not going to get is a DQ or a countout or whatever. Either John Moxley or Kenny Omega is going to beat the other and leave as champion. We have another Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal. Winner, I guess, is going to get MJF's diamond ring. I guess it's the same diamond ring you... Trade it off or whatever. I got a lot of ideas about this one. We got Darby Allen, Cody Rhodes versus Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. We got Chris Jericho versus Frankie Kazarian. And we have got Britt Baker versus Layla Hirsch. On the other channel, we got the final build towards War Games coming up a week from Sunday. Undisputed Era versus Team McAfee in a War Games match. Team Shotzi versus Team Candice in a War Games match. Leon Ruff against Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest in a triple threat match. And Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes in a strap match. Mike, your thoughts on these two shows. Which are you most looking forward to? You know, on, uh, in another universe, I do a, a Mid-Atlantic uh, Championship Wrestling show. And right now, we're about to get some Indian strap matches between Wahoo McDaniel and Sergeant Slaughter. And I'm guessing this one between Dexter Loomis and Cameron Grimes is not going to be up to that level. Uh, but this ought to be interesting. I, I wonder I, if, if the Thunderdome and the Capitol Wrestling Center has helped anybody. It's Dexter Loomis. You never have to have him cut a promo now. Now he's just going to, to point around, and we're going to have a comic strip come up with his story. Uh, yeah, you can do that exposed. anywhere. They got a Titan Tron. I guess so, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm looking a little bit more forward to what AEW's got coming up here, but the Undisputed Era against Pat McAfee's team is going to be awesome just because of Pat McAfee. You saw the way he took that kick to the face by Adam Cole, and obviously he wasn't on this week's show. He's probably going to be on next week's, and I am looking very much forward to that, and it's like a lot of the matches. Unfortunately, I got a real feel off NXT this week. It was a lot like the main roster, where there there was so much stuff that I just it it didn't it felt like you were going counter to the talents and 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 what you wanted to you know give them uh, from the wrestlers and it's too bad. Timothy Thatcher is a great example of this because we're probably going to have him in, in Champa at some point here, uh, maybe even in time for Takeover. But look at how he's been exposed and how he has been 
brought along here all of a sudden he's and this is nothing against whatever his name is the retrosexual anthony green that he's been feuding with here but like they kind of rushed into him being equal with one of his students now you got he taps out to Kushida. you got champa talking at the camera and blowing him off as like almost main roster style as thatcher's just holding his arm making a mean face in the ring and that wasn't the only feel of what they do on the main roster to what they do to people there was a lot of that throughout the show and that's one of the most disappointing parts of nxt the whole deal with leon ruff and johnny gargano is very you know it hasn't helped leon ruff i don't think the kevin owens segment helped him at all so there's way too much of that and getting away from what i think a lot of people like out of nxt and building towards these matches in a much more rational and you know calm way as opposed to all the the nonsense that they're doing well, I want to mention that today we have a lot of time for feedback. We can talk about both of the shows. We can talk about one of the most fun things we talked about for a while, unfortunately, had to do with the death of Bob Ryder, but memories of the 90s, memories of the Internet days of the mid-90s. If you guys want to talk about that, we got so many. Somebody actually tweeted that picture of them with their AOL startup disc. Put that up there the other day. So whatever's on your mind today is fair game. We're going to start with text messages. Maybe we'll end with text messages. We'll see how they go. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. 425-780-7566. Send your text messages in. You can also email brian at wrestlingobserver.com. At Brian Elvers on Twitter, at Sempervivi. And we'll take some of that feedback coming up after the break. Only other really th- uh, real thing to talk about here today. Actually, that's mostly it. It's just AWNXT and whatever else is on your mind. So stick around. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live. Joe Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to send us a text message today, 425-780-7566. So before we went to the break, I said, well, I think we got a little more. Ah, we don't have any more to talk about here today. And then our Twitch homies, twitch.tv slash F4W video. Someone says, what about the SmackDown preview, LOL? Well, during the break, I, I went to WWE.com. And on the front page, we have results from NXT. Three NXT stories. We have NXT UK, Braun Strowman suspended. Rocks, Macy's Day float. We have a SmackDown match from November 27, 2009. Carmella's most savage moments. An interview with Roderick Strong and Isaiah Swerve Scott. A TLC match from 2012. Dude, there ain't nothing on this website about SmackDown tonight. So your preview is SmackDown is tonight. That's all I got for you. I suppose if more comes out on Instagram, I suppose I could look up there, but I ain't looking right now. All right, very quickly, AW and NXT. Hangman Page had a very good match with John Silver, and he defeated him. Had a Kenny Omega promo hyping up the match next week. Powerhouse Hobbs beat Lee Johnson, and afterwards, Taz was very upset about the FTW title. No respect being put on this belt. He hijacked the show. Cody came out. Cody talked a little bit too much trash. Taz choked him out with the Taz mission. So they're building up something there. We had Top Flight returning. They lost to Jack Evans and Angelico, but man, they gave Top Flight everything in that match. Made him look like big-time stars. Beat him in the end. Tried to continue beating him, but the Young Bucks came out, so it's clearly going to be Jack Evans and Angelico versus Young Bucks for the tag team titles. FTR vowed to win the belts back. Jericho and Hager versus SCU. Really fun tag team match. You want to see a tag team professional wrestling match? That's a match for you. And afterwards, they set up Chris Jericho versus Scorpio Sky for next week. Tony came out for a contract signing for Kenny Omega, John Moxley. Moxley beats him up on the entrance ramp, gives him his finish on a belt, and then cuts the big promo, the big money promo for next week's free show on Wednesday night. I thought this promo was great. We had Anna Jay and Akarushita. Akarushita beat her for the title. Match was all right. 
And it's still green, but good for what it was. And Abaddon lurked out afterwards, so that's next. And finally, the main event of the show, Pac and Phoenix versus Butcher and Blade. Andy Kingston on commentary. Butcher and Blade got the win, and they're beating on the baby faces. Actually, I think that Pac and Phoenix are baby faces. Other people think they're heels. I think they're baby faces now. But anyway, Lance Archer came out, and so they are building up Lance Archer versus Eddie Kingston. All over that battle royal that Eddie Kingston bragged about winning months back. It was an odd way to go off the air for the go-home show for Winter is Coming because it's setting up a match that's not even on that show. But that's how they chose to go off the air. NXT, Ember Moon and Candice. In the ring, good. Booking-wise, they beat Ember Moon. Everybody ganged up on her and beat her. And then Tony Storm ran out to make the save. And then she turned and beat on Ember Moon and left her laying. I presume the women's team is winning that war games because, boy, have the baby faces been made to look like total geeks. I'm presuming that's going to happen. If it doesn't, I'll rant about it later. Undisputed Era promo setting up the main event. Adam Cole's a great promo. Thatcher and Kushida, I don't even know where to start. Match is fun. And then Ciampa comes out to watch. Ciampa distracts Timothy Thatcher and Kushida submits him. They submitted Timothy Thatcher to build heat for Thatcher and Ciampa. My brain exploded. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. We had a very long Kevin Owens show with Leon Ruff. It was funny. It was way too funny for television. Way too funny to be building up a match at TakeOver. If you loved it, great. If I'd been watching it at a house show, I would have raved about it. It was not a house show. It was a television show to build up TakeOver. And it's like, it's comedy. This North American title is comedy. It's comedy belt. Everybody involved is doing comedy. I won't say that my mind was blown, but I will say... Whew, Cameron Grimes, Jake Atlas. It's very main roster. We'll get to that in a second. You're all, your time is almost here, Mike, because you've been resetting this box for 15 minutes. Cameron Grimes, Jake Atlas... <laughs> Jake Atlas just gets totally squashed and blown off. Looks like that's the end for that guy for a while. And then they do the deal with Dexter Loomis setting up the strap match. Rhea Ripley vows she's not going to the main roster. She gets beaten up like a geek. Hopefully their team wins. And finally, the Pete Dunne, Kyle O'Reilly ladder match. This match was the best match on either show. They almost killed each other, but it was fantastic. And, of course, the heels win with a masked, alleged Pat McAfee running in. So... Man advantage for the heels going into war games, but a tremendous main event. These two guys are awesome. Now, Mike, if everything appears to be working, what are your thoughts on all of this? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. You keep everything. telling me you're resetting the box, and I'm like, why? There's been no problem the entire show. I, I don't. Maybe I'm. I'm. Never mind. <laughs> Look, that my biggest problem. You just ran through it uh, with what they've been doing. It is way too main roster feels for me with a lot of this nonsense. That Kevin Owen show was straight off the main roster, and again, I like everybody involved in, and I just would love to have seen that be uh, portrayed a lot differently and laid out a lot differently. The Timothy Thatcher thing for a while has boggled my mind. We haven't really talked about it, but then having him be distracted and lose to Kushida and having Tommaso just like run him down dead faced into the camera as he sits there in the, in the ring with holding his arm, you know, even if you go and get some heat on him, you can't get back what you've lost now with him. And, and that's unfortunate. Even if he does, you know, it becomes incredibly entertaining again, ripping his students arms off here as he goes for a revenge on Ciampa. But uh, again, how AEW built to uh, what they were doing, I liked a lot more. I love the fact that they have played Archer in the background of Eddie Kingston, and Eddie has needled him in the time that Archer wasn't there. I'm not sure exactly what Jake Roberts was doing, though. He was ha- he seemed to be having an issue with the shirt. What was happening with Jake Roberts in the background? Dude, I had no idea. I was just trying to figure out what was going on in the foreground. It's like, Lance Archer is making the save? Well, Lance he- Archer? He, he maybe they could have like laid it out a little bit more of he was going out there to, you know, beat up Eddie Kingston for stealing this spot. And I mean, they could have probably driven that home more. But yeah, I mean, I get that. But uh, look, they've done 
that's something we've seen in wrestling for years. You know, somebody who's not directly involved, they can be in the show closing angle as long as you have a direction on where it's going. And I'm sure they have a direction on where it's going. So even though it may have felt a little bit wonky to you, it still, to me, was a lot better than, in you know, not how NXT went off the air, but certainly how NXT portrayed their women's title situation or the women's war game situation, which I thought was, you know, Tony Storm's turn and how they laid out the, the, the good guys. I I'm, wasn't particularly a big fan of exactly how all that went down. As far as your notes, and he is absolutely right. Team Taz has the most amazing names for their members. Taz, Hook, Cage, Powerhouse, and Starks. Starks Serious could use a better nickname, quite frankly. No, no. Look, look at Ricky Starks. In, in, in with all those guys juxtaposed with all of those dudes there, he's perfect to be Ricky Starks in the midst of all of that hook and, and cage and, and all of that powerhouse. I mean, it's perfect. He plays, uh, he's the hot stuff Eddie Gilbert there with Sting and Steiner and all these other monsters he's got around him. No, that's perfect. Absolute, everyone is noted. How about definitive Starks? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, doesn't roll off the tongue. This person here says, when William Regal made that strap match official and Cameron Grimes asked Regal, why do you hate me this much? That was a shoot. Well, I don't know about that, but. Well. You got to really, you got to really hate somebody to book a strap match on TakeOver between Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis. Apparently it's the fans considering they keep putting Dexter Loomis out there, right? I mean, you know, forget about Cameron Grimes. What about us? What about the people? This person here says, man, Jake Atlas should have listened to Dave and gone to AEW. After watching me get pretty much squashed by Cameron Grimes, who himself is on a losing streak, that sealed his fate. All he's done so far in NXT is get murdered by Ciampa, lost a couple of title matches to Santos Escobar. Look at Jungle Boy, on the other hand. Dude, Jungle Boy, Darby, MJF. I mean, there's probably a dozen others I'm not even thinking about, right? Ricky Starks. I don't know if Jake Atlas had the same personality as all those guys. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I guess he might be in a better position, but... I don't know. Look at it this way. He's making money and the clock is now ticking. So just hopefully, you know, I would rather go out that way than be on the main roster and having this happen to him. And there's probably no shot that he gets there. So, you know, as long as he doesn't get hurt, I mean, I know because a lot of people are losing their minds about Ben Carter signing there. Look, I don't know what to tell you, but they are have they do have stability. They do have money coming in. Not to say they couldn't get that from AEW, but. You know, you can't get in these people's heads on what they like to do and what they want to do. So just be happy that the clock is ticking and, you know, sooner or later their deals will be up and we'll see if they resign or not, because that's another thing. People lose their minds. I can't believe this person resigned. That's how it goes. What is going on with this Zia Lee storyline, this person says. I am so baffled and confused, I don't even know how to feel about it. Well, we could talk about it after the break. Stick around. Observer Live. Yo, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. No, I have no idea what's going on with Zia Lee. There's chalk, some Sifu. People are needing to win but never do. They're being threatened. I don't know what's going on. I, I can't even, I, I can't even like, listen. They got the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal coming up next week. I could come up with a hundred ideas. But the Zia Lee storyline Blank. My brain is blank. Thinking about that one. So I guess we'll see. Bird says, I personally like your idea of a possible 60-minute draw, but I think we see Omega win, since I get the vibe AEW thinks the fans will feel screwed if they don't get a clear winner for a match like this. Well, you're welcome to feel screwed if they go to a 60-minute draw, but they are giving you, if that were to be the case, they are giving you John Moxley versus Kenny Omega for an hour for free on television. So, if this were pay-per-view and you paid your 60 bucks and you wanted to finish and you got a draw, I could see you being mad about that. Bro, it's free. Absolutely positively free. And quite frankly, like, if I'm in charge and I'm going to do a 60-minute draw, I prefer to do it on a show where fans are paying nothing than a show where fans are paying 60 bucks and are going to be really mad that they wanted a winner and they got a draw. So, if there ever was a time to do it, 
Well, now's as good a time as any. Free. TNT. Absolutely. Take a set to do it, too. You know, but it comes down to those last five minutes. That wind up to that match and how you go out and how you play it. And the easy way to play it would be Kenny Omega having John Moxley against the ropes and Moxley, Moxley just hanging on and, and Omega just looking to take it and just being a little bit short in it. And that's their Mike skills and their interactions can carry this thing through till February. You know, it's not optimal. I know people would probably want to see it now. There are some people that believe Kenny Omega needs to have it right now. Kenny Omega, Omega doesn't need to have it right now. In fact, I think he could take an L and still nothing is going to change because I think that's how strong he's going to be presented and how strong he's going to be figured. And we know where Moxley's at. So I have all the confidence in the world in them to build this, not only to next week, but for months on end, if that's what they decide to do. So I'm all for either a draw or even, like I said, Moxley taking the, or uh, sorry, Kenny Omega taking the loss here. Problem with text messages here is, Autocorrect, I guess. I'm just going to read this the way it was sent to me. I think I can interpret it. You being up all these singles, but what about top flight? These guys came out of nowhere and are being booked awesome and are yet losing. Well, thing with top flight is <laughs> what their debut match was against the Young Bucks, who were the AW Tag Team Champions, and they were an unsigned team. So there ain't no way they're winning that match, number one. And number two, I'm not sure exactly when they were signed, But the match that you saw on Wednesday was taped the previous Thursday because they taped back-to-back days. I don't think they were signed that day either. So they're not going to be beating uh, Jack Evans and Angelico, nor, quite frankly, should they have yet. I've said it a thousand times. You can't watch AEW the way that you watch WWE because they book in a completely different manner. If what happened to Jake Atlas happened on the main roster, like, the guy's done. He's going to be on main event, and you're not going to see him for a long time. That's the way they book. It's been a year now, and the way they book in AEW is, if you're a young guy, chances are you're not going to be winning a lot of matches early. But your day is going to come. the, The best example to look at, I mean, Jungle Boy, obviously, and also Darby Allin. Darby Allin didn't win every match. Darby Allen lost to Cody. I think he or he had a draw and then a, whatever the deal was, but his time eventually came. Time is going to come for Jungle Boy. Time is going to come for Top Flight. And not everybody can win all the time. There's got to be a pecking order. And if you are booking a company where there's a pecking order and losing every match is not like a death sentence. I mean, my god, they they managed to build up the the Peter Avalon like the whole point of it was they'd never won and they did a long feud over who was going to get their first big win. It was on dark, but I mean, you know, it's not like both of those guys, their careers were over because they kept losing. They actually used their losses to build up a big match that people were actually interested in that watched dark. So top flight doesn't need to be winning a bunch of matches right now. It's not their time. They're 19 and 21. They can go out there, look spectacular They're going to lose more than they win right now. But if they stick around and if they continue to get better, their day will come. That's it. Kind of simple. You know, it's very simple, in fact. And as they're, you know, taking L's, they're going to be winning some on dark. And that's where Bones and Castor are. That's where the gun club is. That's where a lot of the private party, you know, who was last year's, you know, probably led there where they were last year's top flight, you know, and we see how they've gotten along and they've come along very well in some ways. They have it in some other ways. They're not ready for prime time at the top holding titles and main event yet. And that's OK. But, you know, as all of this is going on, they're doing a really good job on dark. Again, using that as essentially like they're developmental and regardless of whether they not whenever this next show comes in this next hour, they're going to get on TNT dark is still going to remain there as a really key piece of their puzzle. They've done a great job signing people and 
not even signing people, just making associations with some wrestlers who they've been able to feature in different situations. And that's the whole bigger picture, too. It's like talking about New Japan and how they have gone about building up their classes from over the years. And and the, the same thing goes with AEW. And there's going to be levels and there are levels to all of this stuff. And. Yes, I'm sure there's people out there that want to see Top Flight win every single time, but it's not going to work that way. And frankly, you don't want it to be that way. You want it to have a slow build up, and you want AEW to think that kind, have that kind of forward thinking because you want AEW to be around. And frankly, there's not many companies in America right now that are doing a whole lot of forward thinking, no matter what their size. So I'm happy with what AEW is doing and some of these guys. It's just the way it's going to be. Would you rather see them portrayed this way or see them on IWTV? It's great to see them there, but losing on AEW in good ways is a lot better than just winning in your in your town on your indies. Not to offend any indies, but you know that's true. Got a million people here texting Zia Lee storyline probably for Miko Satomura. Sounds good to me. Whoa, I'll take wait. it. No, but wait, wait a second. She is coming. She. One, I, I guess, although now we're just going to mix uh, again. I thought if this is a Chinese thing, what would Mako Satomura have anything to do with it? Number one. Number two, Mako Satomura was going to NXT I don't UK. think they flat out said it's a Chinese thing. Well, okay. Uh, fine. Xia Li, Bao, we had a dragon go all the way around. Okay, whatever. It could That's be an fine. Asian thing. It, it could be. It could be. Um, it's WWE we're talking about here. They had Yokozuna was Japanese somehow. That's a big, big Samoan dude. That's that's true. But regardless of <laughs> that, uh, Mako Satomura was going to NXT UK, I thought. That's where her first stop was going to be. So I guess you can try to, to make some... That would be making some hay out of this whole thing. That would be making some salad out of this chicken droppings that the this thing has felt like so far because it just feels as though it's going to end up with some sort of stupid wwe ending that's not going to be as you know as satisfying as mako satamora coming in here you know and i'm just wondering who what came on netflix what was somebody streaming what was somebody watching that came up with that, this idea for the storyline i don't know you got an answer no. Is this on Disney Plus? Dude, I already told you. I don't know what's going on with this storyline. I'm, I'm not flat, watching this stuff. I'm Somebody flummoxed. Mm. Bow. Bow and Zia Lee. This person here says, Happy holidays, everyone, not to be a downer. But when WWE basically took away Finn's cool entrance, I noticed we, the fans, can't have nice things. Well, I mean, they still have the entrance, but he's supposed to be a... I, I, actually, I was going to say he's supposed to be a heel now, but I'm not, not even sure anymore. <laughs> and maybe he's a baby face again. I don't know what's going on. Never? I don't know. <laughs> How many times have I said, I don't know what's going on, when I'm talking about, like, NXT or the main roster? I say it all the time. I'm not saying it to be a jerk. I don't know what's going on. To be fair, when I watched the final segment of AEW and Lance Archer ran down to make the save, I didn't know what's going on there either. But it seems like I said it in 15 segments on NXT this week. Wouldn't it have been smarter to do this AEW match this past Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, than next week? Why would that be? I mean, last year, the day before Thanksgiving was like one of the worst ratings they ever did. So, obviously the world's different now, and I doubt everybody was at the bars, but, I mean, if you're going by, how did they do last year, the day before Thanksgiving? I mean, in no universe would you do the show on that date. I'm sure the kids were still going to the bars, Ryan. Let's see here. Do we get ads on the podcast so we get directly from the Observer website like we do in the Sports Byline feed? No, everything is ad-free. Zero ads on any of the podcasts at WrestlingObserver.com. Sign up today, everybody. Three ninety nine. The, the The clock's ticking. Eight yeah. hours. Lowers my atomic clock. What's Eight hours, nine minutes, and two seconds left. Hmm. I heard you've been selling the website earlier on. You know, you were talking about those shows that have been up there for such a long time. Can you think of any other shows uh, not with you? Well, actually, Mike, I I listed your show, but you were busy resetting your box. So don't yell at me. Sorry that I need to take some time. Oh, now you're going to shift the blame. You yelled at me for something. You were wrong. Now you're shifting the blame. I plugged your show while you were resetting the box. So would you like to say, I'm sorry, 
I'm sorry I accused you of that, Brian. No, I thank I'm you not for plugging my show when I was Believe talking me. about all the great shows on the website. As I was having, you know, trying to soothe this box over here, okay, I was. You're lucky you got what a box. You, you know how long it took me to get a box at Byline at, at uh, whatever it was, yada? yada. Years. I work for free on a phone. You get paid and you got a box. I don't well, want to hear I'm any so- complaining. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian, that you couldn't get a box. I'm, I'm very, very sorry about that for such a long time. Well, I'm sure you cherish your box now, now that you have one. Now, don't you? But I heard you selling this, the, the website. I'm very offended. The, the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare, the longest reigning show on that website that doesn't include Brian or Vinny or, or Dave. Hype that show up. They should go back and listen to those shows. Do Fantastic it. Fantastic knowledge. It's your job. I hyped this stuff up earlier. You want to tell them about mm. your show? What do you got coming up on it? Well, Adam's got a solo show coming up here covering everything oh, wow. that has been taking place because he does fine solo shows, doesn't need me there. He's got this thing settled. He's got it handled. All the New Japan news that you need. He's been watching Dragon Gate, Noah, Stardom. He watches everything. He has got a full report coming up for you. may even be up right now on the website. If not, it will be up some point this weekend. The yeah, Mike Big Audio Nightmare. The only source you ever need for Japanese professional wrestling. Been here the whole time. All these other people, our sons, our grandkids. That's what they are. This person says a WWE 24 special on Keith Lee. Do you think they'll mention his singlet and his musical changes? Dude, they got one coming up for Keith Lee. They got one coming up for Liv Morgan. Like, they've never done a thing with Liv Morgan. Keith Lee debuted like three months ago. I mean, trust me. I would bet dollars to donuts that these WWE 24s are going to be awesome. Okay? But it's funny. Like, What? All right. I'm sure they'll be great. Brian, did you ever wrestle Brian Danielson? No, I did not. But I almost wrestled Brian Danielson. There was a promoter who was going to put it together. I believe during that period where he was fired for being for choking Justin Roberts with his tie. Then he ended up going back. It never happened. Sad. It is sad. Sad, all caps. Back in a moment, Observer Live. That. Tomorrow night, UFC on ESPN. Literally a one fight show. Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis, the main event. Like, there's nothing else on the show. There's the main card has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fighters that don't even have a Wikipedia. Well, now the one fight is off. What? Yes. Curtis Blades tested positive for COVID-19. Oh, no. The main event, I believe this is the first ever UFC main event that was canceled as a result of COVID. I could be wrong about that. But literally, the main event of the show is now Anthony Smith versus Devin Clark. The semi-main event, Josh Parisian, no Wikipedia, versus Parker Porter, no Wikipedia. That's your UFC. Parker? Porter, not Porker. (laughs) <laughs> is that Carol Bro. Parisian's brother too? The other guy? I don't Who? know. I don't know. He doesn't have a Wikipedia. I can't find any information. Uh, I'm just going to go back and watch old Starcades. I think that's a good idea. So anyway, that's tomorrow, everybody. And 85, 86. That'd be good. Best wishes to Curtis Blades, but there you go. That's the update for tomorrow. WWE Network, this person says, more than five years old. How are they still missing basic features? Well... The answer actually is because they, the company that put together the WWE Network, they hired a new company a few years ago. And what I was told was when they hired the new company, they basically rebuilt the entire WWE Network from scratch. Not well. And so they've been busy for the last couple of years trying to work out every single one of those kinks. And that's what you still deal with to this day. Hmm. All right, everybody. We're out of time. I want to thank y'all for listening. We're down to eight hours and 40 seconds right now. So go! WrestlingObserver.com, three ninety nine a month. Do not miss out. I think I did, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just do it now, everybody. WrestlingObserver.com, three ninety nine. Don't miss it. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.